Welcome to Wyckoff Assembly of God Online Church. We're so glad you joined us today. And we'd like to say thank you for joining us. And maybe you'd just like to take a moment and connect with somebody else. Maybe text them and say, why don't you join us online today at Wyckoff Assembly of God? And we'd love to have them here also. In a few minutes, I'll be sharing the word. Fan the flames is what God put in my heart. Fan the flames. And uh, we'll be talking about missions, we'll be talking about worship, and we just want you to enjoy the experience of worshiping a God that loves you so much today. Amen. We're so glad you're here. Let's join in with worship.
covered by your grace so free here I am knowing I'm a sinful man covered by the blood of
so easy to worship and open our heart up to the Lord and when we do that he works in us because we focus on him not the situation not our issues not our not the things we see around us in this natural world we truly fix our eyes on Jesus that transports us to a place that reminds us that he is all powerful he is all knowing he is still on the throne we want to take your needs and your request before the throne today. We're going to do that at this time. Father God, we just come to you now. We thank you that we have opened ourselves up and experienced your presence in a new and a fresh way during the worship time. Now, Lord, I pray that you would work and move in each person as they're listening. Lord, they may not let us know their request, but that's okay because you know. You know the request even before we utter it, but you do say that we should ask you. So we are asking that you would meet the needs of your people. If it's healing, if it's strength, Lord God, if it's just being encouraged and lifted up, maybe, Lord, they need to see a fresh revelation of you in their life. Maybe they need to feel your presence and your love, Lord God, in a special way. Maybe they're alone and they just need you to lift them up out of their loneliness, Lord. Whatever it is, maybe it is financial. Lord God, you make the provision. Lord, there are many times during our week we get so busy we forget to pause. But Lord, we need to begin to pause and clue into the pauses in the day where we can just utter a prayer to you. Even if it's just a moment, it's a pause to reflect on you. And Lord, we invite you into everyone's life this entire week that you would walk with them, that you would move inside of them. You would open doors. And God, you would give them opportunities that they can show others that your power is at work in and through them. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, over the next few weeks, we have several things happening. We have uh, a guest speaker that's going to be with us and online too. He'll be with us online. I've, I've gotten him to put something together just for the online uh, group. And um, the guest speaker is uh, Reverend George Sanchez and a great man of God. Loves the Lord tremendously. And he'll be sharing with us on Palm Sunday. Uh, then we move over to Good Friday service. And yes, we are doing a special Good Friday service similar to what we did last year. We won't be doing an in-person one, but we'll be doing one online for communion service on Good Friday night at 7 o'clock. And I um, want you to join us and make sure your communion's ready to, to join us on that event. And then on, on Easter Sunday morning, uh, we're looking for God to just do some great things. And by the way, we are also opening up for our kids, our yes. children, to Amen. join us in their own special mm -hmm. time on Easter Sunday morning. And uh, if you'd like to connect with that, you need to connect with uh, Pauline Foley, and she'll help you and guide you through all those things. And uh, if you don't know how to get a hold of her, just call the church, and we'll be glad to connect you with her and yes. make sure there's a reservation there for you, because we have to space things out still. We're working on that, spacing things out, making sure things are done mm -hmm. properly, and uh, that'll be just great. Amen.
It's our Mission Sunday, and we want to uh, pray for missionaries around the world. We, we support several missionaries, and we also pray for them faithfully. And you know, as we sit here in this, you know, a little studio office on the wall, we have this poster. I'm just noticing, who will you pray for today? Mm. And it has uh, the countries of the world, and some are highlighted mm. and some are not. And, yes. and uh, you know, I want to challenge you. Who will you pray for today that God would begin to lay on your heart a country? Maybe it will be a city in the country. Maybe it will be a capital in a country around the world to begin to pray. Because things are happening around the world that we don't know about. We hear about some things, but there are things we never hear about and God wants to move and God is stirring. And I know that we do not want to see America, the United States, left out of an end time revival. We need it just as much as every Amen. country around the world. But just I challenge you to begin to ask God each day, who should I pray for today? Mm. So, Lord, we lift up our missionaries yes, around Lord. the world. They represent yes, every continent in the, in the world we have missionaries on. And, God, you know exactly who they are that needs right now a special touch. Lord, I could name some, and, but, Lord, I want to rely on you and your Holy Spirit that knows exactly who needs that extra special touch today that god you would move there in the country the continent the capital the home the apartment they're living in maybe it's a shack in the jungle lord god i don't want to make it sound like it's so awful god to be a missionary but you call them to things that some of us could never even imagine and Lord, I pray that you will uphold them, preserve them, and sustain them. That you would bring healing to those that have been suffering so with cancer and even taking treatments. Lord, and even doctors for some have said there's just not anything else we can do. But we come to Dr. Jesus, the master physician, the one who has the power to speak to the cancer and it be gone out of their bodies, every bit of it gone, nothing hidden, no seed, nothing left, Lord God. We call on you today to do the miraculous, yes, that Lord. eyes would be opened in those countries where they've been yes, ministering, Lord. Lord, where people have shut their hearts, their minds have been closed to the gospel, but a miracle, Lord God, that they cannot deny, that they have to admit, can only be from God, will open eyes, will open and deaf ears will soft and melt hard hearts Lord God that's what our world needs around the world Lord do that for that missionary Lord God that the covers are bare yes, Lord. And, the, and the money isn't there to Hallelujah. go to the market to buy food for the cover Lord, you make provision just like you did with the woman that used her last piece of little bit of flour and oil and made cake for the prophet. And then she had enough for her son and her. And they did not die and did not starve. They didn't even, nothing happened until it was time for the harvest to happen again. They had enough food to carry them through. Do that for that missionary whose cupboard is bare right now, I pray in Jesus' name. The Lord, for those that just feel like they've been plowing and they've been planting and sowing, yes, Lord. and Lord, nothing is happening. God, begin to show them. Show them the battle that, that's been raging in the heavenlies and, and that it's about to be broken. Lord, that, that soil and those seeds that they've been planting and sowing is about to reap a harvest for your kingdom that they can't even imagine, Lord God. Mm. Lord, I thank you. That around the world and even here in America, you are stirring. You are stirring and moving. And Lord, you are going to open blinded eyes. You are going to release the, the deaf ears to hear. And you're going to melt every heart and heart and turn them toward you. And I thank you that we will see these things happen. And Lord, we will not only see them, but we will be a part of them, Lord. And we thank you for that strength for every missionary around the world today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, if you're giving a missions offering, you can give it online. Yes. 
and we you see that Jenna rush on there and that's where we give through and it's uh, safe once you go into that you're, you're safe I know that sometimes it says not safe connection but it's just uh, angling it off to, so that it can go to Jenna rush yes. and uh, it is a safe connection once you get in there it's totally safe and also some are sending in by the way of mail some have dropped it by the church uh, the others have during our Sunday service we have some buckets in the back and that's mm -hmm. we've changed that yes. and they're dropping in the buckets in the back we're just glad for everybody that gives yes. and uh, if you're giving towards missions make sure you mark it towards missions so we right. can make sure it gets that yes. direction we're excited I'm praying that we'll be able to add some more missionaries on this year yes. and that we'll be able to stretch that's mm -hmm. right just yes, stretch amen. out our, our yeah. tent post a little bit more that we'll be able to reach farther than we've ever reached before amen I want to share with you a passage or thought that the Lord gave me, and I was, I was really struggling with a couple of different passages, and nothing was coming together. But it ties it together with this one thought here that the Lord just really, uh, literally just birthed inside of me this morning and just said, this is it. This is it. Uh, I want to talk about fanning the flames. I've talked about that before, but I want to talk about it maybe with a different angle today. Fanning the flames. Um, 2 Timothy 1 through 5 through 9 says, I remember your genuine faith. I, I love it when God, you know, just makes a note of things and says, I remember your genuine faith. Yeah. I remember your genuine faith. For you share the faith that fi first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that the same faith continues strong in you. In other words, it's, we've seen it in the generations. But it's not just about the generations. You know, I go back several generations. And I can't rest on those generations. It's, it's, it's what God is doing yes. in my life now that really matters. And it goes on to say, this is why I remind you to fan into the flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid hands on you. For God has not given us the spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. And don't be ashamed of me either, even though I'm in prison for him. With the strength God gives me to be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. For God saved us and, gave, and called us to his holy life. He did this not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan before the beginning of time. To show us his grace through Christ Jesus. Uh, fanning the flames is this idea of, of birthing it through. You know, we, we do fires around the house an awful lot in a fireplace. Right. In a fireplace. <laughs> and one of the things we've noticed so many times is that we come down the next morning, uh, we, we want to clean out the ashes that are in there and take them out and put them around the bushes. But if we were to do that immediately, we'd have other fires going on. And oftentimes the coals are still hot. The embers are still hot. Right. Sometimes we have to rearrange the fire to get it burning a little more. But one of the things we've noticed in a lot of the fires we do, especially outside, we, I mean, I've taken a blower and I'm blown <laughs> and you got the fire going even more. But painting those flames does an incredible job. Yes. It just burst it forth in such ways. And, and when you get all the ashes off of something, get all the dust off of it, get all the debris off of it, all of a sudden you get those red embers. That's what begins to burst into flame mm -hmm. up next against mm -hmm. a, a new piece of wood or something else. It's fanning those flames that gets it going and gets it going more. Sometimes we'll just throw a log on the, on the fire in the morning. <laughs> Just a couple logs on there and walk away and you come back and all of a sudden, poof. Yes. And sometimes you have to literally begin to fan the flames. We've got this, this uh, bellows that we have that we bought. So Because if, if you use the blower inside the house, I learned that it could <laughs> bring ash all over the house. So we don't do it that way. But you can bring these bellows in. You can begin to blow on that in the morning there and, and just blow on it a little more. Blow on it a little more and it's kind of like fanning the flames. And as you fan it. Something begins to take place and something begins to happen. You know, we're getting close to uh, the time of Jesus going to the cross. And there's something that Jesus did there. And I believe it's part of fanning the flames. Something that Jesus did there. And John, the 17th chapter, talks about this. And some have called it the, prayer, the, the Jesus prayer or the Lord's prayer 
or the prayer that Jesus made. And it's not the one that we typically talk about, our Father which art in heaven. But he literally goes through this entire chapter 17 and he prays for three areas. Yes. Prays for three areas. And I want you to stay with me on that fanning the flame. Put that aside for a second. We're going to come back to that in a moment. Uh, but Jesus begins to pray and he begins to pray in the first section there. Uh, Jesus begins to pray for himself. But he doesn't do your typical <coughs> praying for himself. In fact, let me just read a couple of these words. I won't go through the whole chapter. You might want to read that on the side there. But after saying these things, Jesus looked up to the heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that he can give glory back to you. For you have given authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given to him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, the one who sent, was sent to earth. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. Notice he's bringing everything. Yes. He's saying, Lord, you know, this, uh, Father, this is the time we're bringing this whole picture together. We're bringing this whole thing together. And so he begins to pray literally for himself. Not, and, and there are some things that I look at that he begins to pray for there. First of all, that the Son be glorified. The sacrifice be acceptable, he talks about. The work be completed. Be glorified so the Father be glorified. Don't glorify me just so that I'll be glorified, but glorify me so that you'll be glorified, Father. He has this way of turning in all sorts, all sorts of ways. He reminds God that his work is done. His work is completed, just about finished off. It's completed. Uh, and he, he brings that all into that, that perspective of all those things. Uh, the second thing we find that he does in this passage, he begins to pray for his disciples. That's the second part, praise for disciples. And he prays several things on his disciples. He prays that they will remain in the world, protect them by the power of your name. None have been lost except for one. He's talking about Judas there. That they may have a full measure of joy. I love this thing on joy. You know, I, I, I keep hitting on it over and over again. Every time I turn around in Scripture, joy is there. Uh, sometimes we think Christians have to have this thought of being Oh, Lord, I hope I make it someday. No, it's joy. <laughs> that their joy, that their joy, mm -hmm. that their joy will be a full measure. Mm -hmm. Full measure. He reminds uh, in his prayer, and sometimes we remind God of some things in our prayers. Reminds in the prayer that the world hates them. But they're not of the world. The world hates them, but they're not really part of the world. They're separate from it. You know, sometimes we want to fit in all over the place. And that's not what God called us to do. He didn't call us to fit in. He called us to, to be the people that he desires us to be. And he says, don't take them out of the world, but protect them from the evil one. Yes. And then he says, sanctify them through your word, Father. Sanctify them as they, as they begin to read the word of God. Sanctify them. And this is what Jesus is praying and then Jesus moves in the third section of this long prayer that he goes into, and he prays for all who believe. He stretches it past the disciples, but prays for all who believe, not only now, but also in the future. Amen. Prays for all who believe. I have given them the glory you gave me so that, you, so that they can be one. And he prays for unity. Prays for unity. Now, I think we, 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 we mix this thing together a little bit here sometimes. And God didn't really want us to. You know, you remember what I said a few minutes ago? They remain in the world, but they're not part of the world. Sometimes when we're looking for this praying for unity, we want the world to be in unity. That's not what God was doing there. But the Christian world will be in unity with one another. You know, they'll know we're disciples by our love, which, you know, Scripture also says. And, and this unity needs to come out there. And so he's praying for that unity. And he says, love them, Father, as you have loved me. Yes. Love them, Father, as you have loved me. In other words, don't be any different, Father, from what you have been to me. Oh, that's a powerful mm -hmm. prayer. Yes. 
And Father, I'm, I made you known to them so that your love will be in them. Father, I made you known to them so that your love will be in them. And that's an incredible love. Uh, that's what's way beyond our capabilities as humans. That goes way beyond those things. Uh, and Jesus literally fanned the flame in his toughest hour. Fanned the flame in his toughest hour. Where do you get that from? How are you getting that, Pastor? Well, when hard times come, we usually draw back, isolate, crawl into a cave. Uh, the last thing we want to do is make a scene where, where you know, the, the flame gets fanned. <laughs> We don't, we don't want anybody else to know we're there. We're just going to draw into ourselves. And Jesus prayed that the flame was trying to, that was trying to be extinguished in them would be fanned. He encouraged them. He wanted to see the unity. He wanted to see the joy coming out. He wanted to see them that love pouring out in their lives. And he wanted to see all those things take place. See, all this took place before he was arrested. He was just on the verge of being and knew it. Right. He right. knew he was getting ready to be arrested mm -hmm. and knew all those things. And the hard times were coming. It was going to get worse than it ever had before. It was really going to get bad. And before he was even facing all those things, before he was denied, before he went to trial, before he was beaten, before he was taken to the cross, and before his darkest hour, he was fanning the flame wow. because he was praying for all these mm -hmm. people. He was fanning the flame because he was beginning to ignite this thing in prayer. <laughs> There's no greater way right. to ignite something than by prayer. That's right. And so he was literally igniting this in himself and igniting this in the believers and igniting this in the disciples that were there at the time. He's igniting it all. Come on, let's go. And he's beginning to build this whole thing up. Did you notice he's not praying, Lord, keep us from this persecution we're in right now. He didn't mm -hmm. say that. Didn't say that. You know, a lot of times we get lost in, in a lot of things around us and a lot of the political things around us and say, oh, God, why are you doing this and why are you doing that? It's not about the political scene. It's about your relationship with God. Jesus never focused on the guys that were getting ready to arrest him. Hmm. It's true. He never focused on that band of guys that were coming in there to arrest him, to kill him, to mock on him, to try him or crucify him. In fact, he didn't even... He didn't even Focus on Peter's uh, getting ready to deny me in a few minutes. He didn't focus on that. What he prays for Peter is something very different. He literally prayed that, that God would protect Peter, that God would protect him by the power of, of wow. the Father's name. Now we have uh, this world that we live in, and, and Peter's living in that world. And, and, you know, he's not one of those people I know that's going to be lost because that's just Judas. But Peter's got some things going on there. And Lord, don't take them. Father, don't take them out of this world. But protect them from the evil ones. Sanctify them through the word. Protect them. Yes, guide yes. them. Build them up. And yes. he's, he's fanning the flame on them. Literally fanning the flame on them. And Jesus fanned, fanned the flame in the toughest hours that he would face. Focused on the guys that were going to carry on the word. Focused on the guys that would be the believers in the future. Focused on you. One of the fan the flames inside of you. You know, during critical times of crisis, the disciples later on would also fan those flames. Because they learned from this, and later on they would fan those same flames. You know, let's, let's jump over, if we could, to Acts the third chapter. Acts the third chapter. Now, Jesus has already ascended at that point in time. We've already gone through the resurrection. You say you're jumping way ahead here. Uh, just be calm. We'll get it. Okay, we'll get it. In Acts 3, Peter and John are headed to the temple. Now, why are they headed to the temple? Well, because it was time. Simple as that. They were headed to the temple because of the time. They didn't have a vision. They didn't have a plan. They didn't have anything else. They were just going to go pray. Why were they going to pray? Because they were getting ready to fan some flames. That's right. They were getting ready to fan some flame, flames. And in Acts, the third chapter, verses 1 through 10, it says, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. They, they did this on an ongoing, regular basis. As they approached the temple, a man, lame from birth, was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate. Did you just hear that? 
Each day he was put beside the temple gate. In other words, they'd seen him over and over again. Because these guys were going regular for prayer. The one called Beautiful Gate. So he, would, he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently. Now these guys have already had some fan, flames fanned inside of them. They've been in the upper room. They had waited on God. You know, they had waited on the comfort of the Holy Spirit. They had been powered by the Holy Spirit, but they still were getting their, their, their flames a little more fanned by praying some more. Just because you got empowered one time doesn't mean that's, that's where you're going to stop at. There's, there's more to come. There is more things that are going to happen, and God just wants to keep pouring it into you. The Bible says, He that hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. God wants to pour some more into you, just like I took a drink yes. a bit ago. God wants to pour some more mm. into you. So they're going to the temple, getting ready for prayer, and Peter and John see this guy and look at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but what I have, I give. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took him by the hand and says, you know, come on. And just lifts him right on up. Mm -hmm. And the guy's healed by the power of God. Amen. Well, during the critical time of crisis. Why do you say the critical time of crisis? Pastor, well, the critical time of crisis was right then because the, the disciples were getting persecuted like crazy. Mm -hmm. Jesus had just risen from the dead. They had been proclaiming that Jesus Christ was alive and well, and that was creating havoc all over the place. And the more they talked about it, the more that, that the, the leadership there was getting so upset about them, they were trying to shut them down. They were trying to close them off. They were trying to say, oh, you know, wait, get rid of these people. We've heard that before. We've heard that today's time. It doesn't matter what generation it's been. They're always trying to get rid of the Christians. But the bottom line is that, that during the critical time of crisis, the disciples are literally fanning the flames. So how are they fanning the flames? They're taking advantage of the situation that God put before them at that time. They were going to pray. That starts to fan it some. And in the midst of all that, they, they see an opportunity to begin to use the things of God. And in the using the things of God, they're fanning the flames even more. And guess what? It's starting to roar. It's really yeah. starting to roar at that yes. point in time. And going to pray was their plan. But well, why? And, and living it out. And, and in the midst of all the stuff. And, and in the midst of all this, they have still had the unity, the joy. Mm. To be in the world and believe that Jesus had prayed for them about. That Jesus had prayed that they would even be stronger than ever before. And immediately after the miracle, these guys are wanted. <laughs> They're no longer on the top 10 list. They're on the top one list. Because they are totally wanted. Right. Well, they don't care. You know, what does Peter do next? Well, Peter fans the flames even more. <laughs> he doesn't go in exclusion at that point in time. He even fans the flames a little more by preaching in the temple. And he gets arrested for it. And, and what he says in the temple is incredible. Acts 3rd chapter, verse 7 says, Friends, I realize that you and your leaders did to Jesus what was done in ignorance. In other words, he's giving them a way out at that point in time. But God was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold about the Messiah, that he must suffer these things. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then the times of refreshing... Oh, I love this. Yes. The, then the times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. He will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. The times of refreshing are coming. Amen. He gives the persecutors a way out, tells them about Jesus, tells them to repent, and promises some times are refreshing, that God is going to just pour into their lives. So what happens? Well, Peter and John get arrested. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. To these guys, it was no big thing. It was just another opportunity to do what God wanted them to do. It was another opportunity to spread the word, to fan the flames even more. 
In Acts, the fourth chapter, verse 23 through 31, it says, As soon as they were freed, after they'd gotten arrested and gotten jailed, all those kind of things, as soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. O sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through your ancestor David, your servant, saying, Why are the nations so angry? Or raging is another version of that. Why did they waste their time with their futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle, and the rulers gathered together against the Lord and against the Messiah. In fact, this has happened here in this very city. And they're going on, you know, this is, this is what's going on now. And jumping down to verse, verse uh, 28 there says, But united against Jesus, your holy servant whom you appointed, uh, but, you, but everything they determined beforehand according to your will, and now, O oh Lord, hear these threats. Give us, give us, I love this, your servants, yes. great power. Yes. Now, why, why did they need great power? Well, so we can go out and kill them mm. off. No. Mm. No, 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 no. So we can go out and start riots in the street. No, 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 no. Doesn't say that. So that we can go out and, and maybe do some other things. And maybe, maybe just take this government down right now. That doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. Does not say that. What it does say is give us power. Give us power. Woo! Give us power. Hallelujah. Lord, hear the threats and give us, your servants, great boldness. Yes. Boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. Hallelujah. There's where the power comes in. With great yes. healing power, may miraculous signs and wonders be done. The name of Jesus, whoo, be glorified. And after yes. this prayer, the meeting place shook, and where they were filled with the Holy Spirit, then they preached the word of God with boldness. They began Amen. to do what they'd asked God, Amen. the power to do even greater. Do more, Lord. Yes. Fan the pl flames so that we can do more. Sometimes we think fanning the flames is just about an experience. Mm. Mm -hmm. But it's not just right. about an experience. Right. It is about fanning the flames that will begin to ignite and grow and grow and grow. Stretch out your hand with healing power. Miraculous signs and wonders be done. Play shook! The play shook. Yes. You know, God does great things. Amen. God yes. does great Amen. things. Amen. Amen. God's doing great things in your life today, yes. too. God wants to do even greater. That's right. So, where do I go from here? You know? <laughs> Is it one of those things that God wants to fan the flames uh, inside of me even more? Oh, yeah. God wants to just literally ignite even greater. Ignite amen, even greater. Amen, yes. He wants to ignite so much inside of your life that he wants to literally move you to the place. You know, some things you're you're hung up on, some things you're lost in, you're looking for this type of way of life that you thought was gonna happen all the time. I don't find any of those things in scripture that I just read to you. I find what Jesus prayed was incredible. I find that how Jesus began to fan the flames and, and not only himself, but also fan the flames and his disciples and fan, fan the flames and others. You know what fanning the flames is all about? It creates this energy that's even greater than ever before. Mm -hmm. That's right. Could be for destruction mm -hmm. or could be for production. Right. Depends on how you use it. And what do you want God to do? They prayed it would be for production. They prayed that God would use them even greater than ever before. I don't know why the place had to shake at that point in time. I don't know why that had to take place, but I think sometimes God just throws an extra sign and wonder in there and says, Whoa, right now is a good time. So let me just orchestrate this a little bit better. And that's what he does. He wants to fan the flames inside of you. Yes. 
Maybe there's been some things you've gotten lost on and, and maybe you've become dormant during this time of COVID and everything else we faced and, and you feel like you've been trampled on, you feel like you've been belittled, you know, and you feel like you're, you're supposed to almost be giving up. Well, it's time to fan some flames inside of you. My friend, can I just fan some flames inside of you and say, now's the time to seek after God more than ever before, that God will begin to use you, that God will begin to set you free from all the bondage you're in, that God will move you out in some new ways, and that God will do great things inside of you. Can we just fan some flames inside of you? Because Jesus has already prayed for you. That's right, He's already prayed for you. That was His prayer, and He prayed for you, and He's still praying for you and believing for you. Father God, I ask that right now through your son Jesus Christ that you will begin to fan the flames in some people right now. Lord, some are struggling with some stuff inside of them. Some are struggling to even begin to move out and begin to share your love in such ways and, and begin to share your joy in such ways and, and begin to bring the unity, God, that you want to bring. They're just so lost in themselves. All they think about is them. And that never brings unity, God. But Lord, begin to expand the picture in their life that they'll be able to do some of the things, Lord whether it's going up to a, a place that they sit and go by every single day and have never thought about before but God in that spot that you open up for them to do some ministry Lord let it begin to explode in such a way of your love in such a way of your power in such a way of your healing that takes place and, and transcribes in their life in Jesus name and I thank you for it now Lord Jesus hallelujah I thank you for it now thank you Lord thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My chains are gone. I've been set free. gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you today and give you his peace. May he also fan the flame that's inside of you today. God bless you, my friend.